welcome to my channel Tools for Ascension by Wolfgang and I'm Wolfgang. Today I will be talking about the different aspects of the Kundalini energy. We'll be using our intent, visualization, breathwork, posture and movement to cultivate this energy. Um, yes, um, the elephant in the room is there's a lot of paranoia going on due to the autobiography Kundalini, the evolutionary energy in man by Gopi Krishna about how horrible his experience this were. You know? I mean, that set up a generation to come, you know, with paranoia around Kundalini energy. So Gopi Krishna, you know, lived from 1903 to 1984 and was an ordinary Indian householder, basically quite ignorant, pessimistic and super sensitive, who experienced the awakening of the spiritual life force known as Kundalini at the age of 34. And that was about like me slipping my mom some acid and she goes on a horror trip. And in a way, um, to very sensitive people, Kundalini is like acid. You know, they both raise the life force, um, super clocking your computer perception, so to say. So let us back up now and let me try to explain in plain English what Kundalini is in my personal humble opinion. So when your root chakra that connects your spine to the chi of the earth becomes un clogged. A lot of earth energy or chi starts shooting up your spinal area and kind of like a geyser, you know, or a fire hydrant that got knocked off, you know, and start shooting up. And so this unclogging can be accomplished, you know, in several different ways. And some of these ways um, could get my video banned if I explain in detail how to do it. Let's say it was sex and drugs and rock and roll. Uh, but in principle, you know, there is the spinal pump, you know, that through pelvic movement, just like belly dancing or hula, you know, or fornication. But, um, you know, basically, you know, through this uh, spinal pumping, a lot of chi, you know, can go up people's spine, you know, to a degree that the root chakra is unclogged. You know, for most people, this is a gradual process. And for some, it can quite, comes quite sudden, you know, whether it's wanted or not. So we have this chi, you know, coming up, you know, like water or just like water, you know, it will take the past like least resistance. And you want to make sure that the chi keeps running through your spinal cord in general, you know, through your spine. And then, of course, um, the energy, you know, will also kind of found, fan out in your back and other areas. I mean, just like, you know, an irrigation channel will spread the water into the surrounding fields. I know, some of you will just cringe, you know, over the oversimplification here. But, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, many of us, you know, have back injuries, like herniated discs or spastic backs. You know, about uh, one third of the people have chronic back pain. So these kind of uh, traumata can create obstacles, you know, on the astral plane. And then the chi or the kundalini, you know, it can go sideways you know, and overcharge these areas in your body, you know, where there is too much chi, which of course has all kind of side effects, you know, while starving other parts. So it's just a basic um, plumbing and irrigation, you know, issues when you consider it like that. And so that is one of the reasons why yogis spend a lot of time clearing physical trauma like tension, etc., you know, from their body through the Hatha Yoga system. You know, in the yogic system, Hatha Yoga is just the bottom rank, you know, complete ABC. Get your body fixed, 
you know, before we start looking at the other aspects of your body, mind and spirit complex. So, in Kundalini Yoga, even more attention is given to the spine through a pumping action of the spinal fluid, which the spinal fluid is basically a, a crystalline um, salt solution. It's a liquid crystal. And through the spinal pump, you know, through pelvic movement, just like, again, belly dancing, hula hula dancing, or fornication, or kundalini yoga, you know, they have the cat and cow exercise. You know, these are some basic techniques to raise the life force. Now, when you combine the effect, you know, of the spiritual pump, with the breath of fire, for instance, you know, like you know, do this for five or ten or twenty minutes, you know, you will supercharge <laughs> your blood with oxygen, you know, or ch and chi, and uh, so this can lead to some pretty psychedelic effects. So then in Qigong, you focus more on the governing and the conception vessel, you know, pulling the chi up, the governing bangle, this is kind of outside, you know, the spine, or at the spinal area, basically, you know, and then you recycle the energy back into the body, you know, all the way to the root, and just rotate it, you know, th um, around um, your body, or through your body, nourishing it, instead of uh, just focusing on your enlightenment, you know, they're recycled, more grounded. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, once your spine, you know, and of course on the astral level is squeaky clean and uh, nicely tweaked, so you can run lots of energy through the spine and in, into the brain. And so, and once you supercharge your brain, you know, with breath work, and it's just like overclocking, you know, your computer for your gamers, you know. Um, then you get those more expanded, you know, states of consciousness, you know, those mystical experiences. And so in general, you know, this chi flow up your spine um, can be felt as tingling, slight tingling, and maybe start you know, at the root chakra, and then later on you feel tingling on top of the head. Or, you know, sometimes you may also have this spatial elevator type feeling, like, ooh, you know, where you, everything seems to be uplifted. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes it's, uh, you know, when you smile <laughs> and you have a lot of love, it's, you know, can also be quite you know, orgasmic, but then it will, you know, be all along the spine all along the watchtower, so to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there are also two more movements of chi that can be observed. And this is like snakes, you know, so there is these ener undulating energies, you know, around your spine, you know, they're, you know, they're kind of flowing up and moving around your spine. And um, they are um, called the Ida and Pingala, in um, Sanskrit, and you know, through which you can actually regulate your internal heating and cooling system. And, and I got a video on this too. Um, but um, you know, these are also um, observed by traditionalists as well as people that have no clue about <laughs> you know, They see them too, you know, as like clients. And what is this? And to explain. And of course, I mean, there is to told that there's ample iconography you know, about the Kundalini energy going up like snakes. And um, this is also why I like to do the Sufi grind, you know, where I always kind of um, playfully, you know, sway around. And so I'm always staying in touch, you know, with my spinal energy, you know, to make sure there's a good flow. And then another thing is, when you let the energy squirt out on top of the head, you know, and um, also, you know, push it out along the spine, you know, and have it squirt outside the head, 
you know, this can create in a really strong a field, you know, where the it feels like this to me, you know, and it's like a cobra snake. Um, you know, I think it's maybe part of this, you know, torrential shape, and we just feel the front of it. Um, but in traditional iconography, you know, it's being shown, and it's called the Sheshanaga. Um, there may be different interpretations of this, you know, but this is kind of my experience. <laughs> and of course, you know, the whole Kundalini experience really depends on how sensitive you are and how blocked you are. I mean, it's just like with peanuts and peanut allergy. <laughs> So, just like peanut allergy, you know, kundalini energy is, I mean, serious business and should be done by, uh, not done by the following people, you know. And of course, I have to be politically incorrect here, making judgments on anybody. And, you know, of course, you are we Germans, we have a stellar history of political incorrectness. So, um, let me add some more to this German guilt here. So... <laughs> <laughs> Kundalini energy is not for the high strung, you know. I mean, when life is already super dramatic for you, you know, making it extra intense, yeah, may just, you know, overwhelm you. And I mean, like everybody knew not to give alcohol to Aunt Mimi at the wedding, you know, which just pushed her over the edge. So very similar. And there is this state of consciousness that's um, defined as hysteria, a state of hyper arousal. You know, and, I mean, those people should not um, do this either. And this is when you see the white around the eyes. You know, that's hyper, you know, shocked or hyper arousal. That's when the eyes are open and when they're always like that. That's hysteria. And if they get extra energy, you know, ooh, not good. You know, you have to do grounding, a lot on grounding and get rid of your fear. So, yeah, extra energy, you know, for some people it's like, you know, brewing gas on a Sunday barbecue. Not good. You know? And now in case, and of course this is very controversial, you know, I, uh, this is just my personal opinion, so nobody should follow this. So in the case of schizophrenia, you know, one should definitely first learn how to take care of ghosts. You know, all these discarnates will just swarm you like flies you know, once you crank up your life force. You know, I mean, there are certain things that can be learned and trained and done and they don't bother you anymore. You know, and for that, you need that Kundalini life force. But if you do it, just crank up the life force. <laughs> it's like, you know, having money <laughs> just in your dashboard, in your car, in the parking lot. Not a good idea. So you got to learn your spiritual Kung Fu first. You know, if you pour, before you put that sign on, you know, onto your back, you know, take that life force from me. Mm -hmm. So it's no, not really good for crazies. You know, and so entities and trauma need to be cleared first, you know, at least, you know, at least, you know. Um, another other indicator of people that should not do Kundalini energy is, you know, super steep forehead, you know? especially when it's overhanging. I mean, steep, you know, um, not just straight, I mean, this, but kind of overhanging with this part, you know, is over, you know, your lower part. So these people, they're super intelligent. But when, you know, this high intelligence gets an extra kick of energy, uh, they can get lost in the mental or maybe spiritual realms and then focus less and less on the physical world. Maybe not paying rent, turning space cadets, and I've come across cases like this, you know, where people turn, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, this one did Kundalini Yoga and went nuts. And then I looked at the picture, yeah, it was <laughs> not that super steep overhanging forehead. <laughs> also, you know, in principle, I mean, 
the more you have been traumatized, you know, in childhood, you know, or in any past lifetime, you know, once you activate this life force, the more pain will surface. So please make sure that you open your heart and um, practice forgiveness before you really start getting, you know, into this practice. You know, there is a reason why I'm just, you know, coming after years out with this year. But I think it is time, you know, this is really time now that people are waking up. And, you know, you don't have to do all you have necessary to wake up. You know, this is, you know, also a much, you know, a more traditional way. So another point, you know, that can go wrong is overcharging yourself with chi. Um, so you, our energy system, I mean, you have to understand, we are electrical beings. You know, so our energy systems, like the chakra system, the meridian system, the body system, there's this like circuit boards. And, you know, the chi pressure, you know, is like the voltage. And when you crank up the voltage or even the amperage on a circuit board, you know, the weak spots, you know, get hot. Or worse, you know, they're kind of burn out. Um, and I give you now in, in a life example. For instance, I used to um, combine on a trampoline <laughs> and a big trampoline in a, a jumping so with breath work, you know, and certain movements and certain visualizations. And, you know, together with this weightlessness that you have, you know, at the apex, you know, this is a super powerful and euphoric. And when I did this at a certain point, you know, my inner voice just kicked in and asked me to stop it or I would have a burnout. And I respected that. So, I mean, really, um, please pay attention to your inner voice and let, not let your ego rule. It's just like weightlifting, you know. Don't let your ego determine the weight. Ask your body. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> now, uh, of course, you know, some of you uh, may just ask me, you know, or know me as the guy that always smiles, that makes nice prayers and guided meditation. And you know, but what does Wolfgang know about Kundalini energy? Well, so I was initiated by Muktananda Swami into Siddha Yoga through Shaktipal, Chi transfer, a blessing, you know, where people have mystical experience. And so I did this, you know, in my life, I mean, already, you know, 30 years ago, um, I did this myself, you know, with wands, <laughs> with wands, crystal wands on new age shows, demonstrating how to use a crystal wand, you know, for healing. I can also do it with my hand. I mean, I practiced and taught Kundalini Yoga. And I also, you know, straightened out um, sideways shooting Kundalini with the client and nobody else could fix it. You know, I mean, that happened to him at 17 years old. He was about 34 when he came to me, you know, and nobody was able to straighten it out. And I also stopped Kundalini in climbs, you know, where the Kundalini was going off and they weren't really comfortable, you know, about it at the moment. So, you know, I helped him to close it down. And then, of course, in my personal sessions, you know, through Skype, you know, I open heart chakras and crown chakras on a daily basis. <laughs> I do that to get people in touch, you know, with their high self to breath work and uh, cleansing you know it's not through progressive relaxation or not so much the visualization that's not the traditional way i would do and so that's why you know it's going to really space you out so don't you know do this meditation now while driving or operating heavy machinery and also please you know walk me with a thumbs up to spread the message and uh, your my videos are also available at the major um, podcast channels and um, well let's get started mm -hmm. so please close your eyes and smile you know don't embarrass me in front of source and we ask the absolute source to completely surround us in our parallel timelines with this powerful aura of love and light 
that can only be penetrated. Right, please do so now. Um, and we also ask that only those that will benefit from this video, you know, will come to this video. And we ask that those, you know, um, that uh, would not benefit be distracted, you know, or that the energy be limited so that there is no damage. Um, and we asked dear Archangel Michael and Gabriel to please protect us, you know, from the attention, manipulation, attack and revenge of the dark hearts, the service to self beings, you know, throughout all levels of our being, also on our parallel timelines. Um, mm -hmm. and now smile. And you know, we asked Source and your own high self to erect this column of love and light that connects you from the center of the Earth to the center of Milky Way galaxy. And that's about, you know, three feet in diameter, mm -hmm, which is about a meter. Mm -hmm. And then we asked our spirit guides and Source and all the spirit beings of love and light um, to please clear our earth star and soul star connection of all parasites, interference and trauma on all levels, also on our pearl timelines. Um, and then please also exclude any service to self entities, you know, from our space where we live, where we are. Mm -hmm. Complete privacy. Uh -huh. And then also please exclude any dark thought forms, you know, from other people, you know, whether it's racism or their judgment or their traffic anger or their jealousy or envy, whatever it is, please find our removal and continue to finish. Um, And then also please clear and exclude all dark thought forms that we have created, you know, through our habits mm -hmm. and that are stuck with us maybe from our parents and other people that were critical. So all these dark thought forms that are not helping, we like to have cleared now as much as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. Make sure you agree, mm -hmm. nod your head or s smile or, or think Amen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Now really smile because we invite all our soul aspects that are approved by our high self, you know, for assistance. Um, and it takes about five seconds, you know, to, for their presence to be felt. Mm -hmm. And now really smile and we connect this Gaia, you know, this great hostess here. And you don't have to really, you know, imagine, you know, a long distance to the center of Gaia, um, you know, just maybe four or five meters, maybe even three meters. And imagine that from there, from the Earth star, you know, this is your connection into the center of the Earth. You pull her love into your heart. And then on the axle, you send your love down into the earth. This is first thing, you know, running love with the earth, between earth and heart, back and forth, smile like an idiot, breathe deeply, you know, breathe so as strong that you feel the air flowing through your nostrils. In and out, smile. Very good. And again, we ask that any blocks, any parasites, you know, anything between you and the earth, God, is be cleared. Keep breathing back and forth. Back and forth. All the way in. All the way out. Just like the ocean waves that the beach all the way in, all the way out. Mm -hmm. 
second now on the inhale star pulling the chi from the earth straight into your heart on the inhale just like before and on the exhale you send it all the way out the top of the head about six feet about two meters should be plenty that's where your celestial chakras are mm -hmm. have your tongue at the roof of your mouth Smile, keep your mouth closed unless you have a stuffed up nose. Just breathe a spot, heaven, or earth energy into the hands. Just keep pushing up. Earth into the heart and out into the hands as if your pump in the fountain mm -hmm, and you spray it as high as you can. And now we invite our spirit guides and the angels of love and light and healing that are qualified to assist you to first of all clear your root chakra from, from quartz and attachment from all lovers from this life, past lifetime. We don't even have to ask whether you have those. You have those. We asked it to be cleared now. Um, breathe back and forth. Mm -hmm. This will kick in now. It takes about five seconds for your intent to kick in. And just keep pulling the energy into your heart and shoot it out the top of the head. And now we ask the spirit guides, you know, and the angels of love and light and healing, to please any clear any cords, you know, or portals through which your energy is being stored. And this could be ex-lovers again. This could also be, you know, magicians and torturers from past lifetimes, you know, rapists many times. Mm -hmm. Um, they do this explicitly for this purpose. And now I ask you know, your high self whether you actually have implants in your energy body, in your root chakra that blocks energy, yes or no. And uh, I would say most of you haven't, mm -hmm. and so it's probably experience now as the answer upflow of energy. So we like to have any influence into our root chakra cleared now. Um, um, um. Make sure you agree. Just keep breathing, making that fountain out the top of the head. Now we ask the spirit guidance whether we have. Um, dark portals in our world. This can come through all kinds of trauma, yes or no. If you like to have those cleared now, closed, and whatever energies and entities and programs came through those dark portals, we like to have removed and sent to somewhere where they can be happy and observed uh, or dissolved. Uh, And let's just ask a little bit more detail. You still having dark portals from rape? Yes or no? This rape could be from past lifetimes. So don't be amazed. <laughs> ask also, um, do you have dark portals from impalement? Yes or no? If you like to have those cleared, of course. And uh, ask, do you have anything like chastity belts? Mm, uh, you know, ask those chastity belts, of course. Um, that block your root chakra, yes or no. And we like to have our spirit guides in us clear those too. Um, 
And are there something like corks or plugs in your root chakra that would be more like a black magic attack, I would say? We like to have yes or no. And we like to have those clear too. Um, um, um. And sometimes, you know, our root chakra gets closed, you know, due to kind of vows of detachment from earth life. Due to, let's say, misunderstood, you know, spirituality of so-called transcendental religions. And, I mean, for instance, in Buddhism, you know, the main idea is that life sucks. There is no way around it, you know, disease and death and other sufferings. So you got to detach, you know, the more you're attached to your body or wealth or whatever, you know, the more you suffer, so you got to detach, you know, and of course one way of detachment from the world is closing your root chakra. And even in Christianity and in most of Hindu teaching, <coughs> you know, carnal life, you know, the, <laughs> the life of the root chakra is seen as an entanglement, you know, with the physical world. I mean, keeping you away from the heavens. And so, you know, so there's no focus or honoring, you know, of the material energy. You know, and then, you know, they become maybe withdrawn to the mental plane and becomes scholars, you know, with a closed root chakra. You know, scholars are armchair philosophers. And of course, you know, as a decent yogi, you know, you, you know, you know how to operate all your chakras. You know, if you want to, you know, breathe a wet blanket in dry and freezing weather, you know, you got to have an open boot chakra. <laughs> you know, you're not going to survive. <coughs> so, you know, through plain out suffering, um, you know, like life sucks and depression, you know, the root chakra is closed. I see this all the time with my clients. Hmm. So let's have um, those some um, blocks and valves clear that clog up our root chakra. Release again. Uh -huh. Let's ask again now do you have any entity attachments or parasites on your root chakra that suck your life force? Yes or no? And just to be on the safe side, we ask that any entity attachment and parasites to our root chakra please be cleared. It's not, you know, it's not uh, allowed. Um, um, um. Let's just give this, you know, about five seconds. And now imagine that you have a propeller into your root chakra. The propeller is about a foot diameter and or 30 centimeters and it's like a Mercedes star, like a big Mercedes star and spin it slowly clockwise, make sure it's clockwise and once you're sure it's clockwise, spin it really fast, just like a garbage disposal. And uh, now um, also use your breath like a leaf blower and breathe you know, out your root chakra and basically grind out anything that's still attached there. It's as if you unclogging the stuff up there. So really like... <laughs> now breathe really strongly in yeah, your root chakra. Mm -hmm and have the propeller help you and you probably will notice that you know after some time there's going to be a little bit more energy coming up this time in your head but let's just crank this up a little bit so instead of a propeller uh, in your, the end of your spine imagine you're having a jet and Mm -hmm. Like NASA rocket outer space, yeah, one of those. Yeah, you become rocket man, rocket 
Woman. And now imagine that you breathe into your root chakra, you breathing oxygen and hydrogen into your root chakra, then this is gonna go like Just have fun and just really, you know, burn your root chakra as if it's like a jet engine. Mm -hmm. Breathe into it. Really breathe into it. You want to hear the air flowing through your nostrils. Mm -hmm. Keep on breathing. Make it nice and hot. Yes. You're clearing your root chakra here. Mm -hmm. Good. So this is a good visualization. Breathing into your root chakra, you just suck it in to your heart and the earth, and then breathe this air, you know, as if this oxygen hydrogen into the root chakra where it ignites. Wonderful meditation. Now, if you want to jack this up a little bit more, and you know, on the exhale, do kegels. Mm -hmm. Just do kegels if you don't know what kegels are. Check it out on the internet, you know, and do it later. I'm not gonna explain this here. But if you do cables, it's gonna really, um, on the axle, it's gonna really shoot the energy into the head. And just, um, you know, maintain this breath pattern, you know, through your root chakra. And now uh, we call in on those aspects of your soul that are you know, masters of Kundalini energy and that are liberated. You know, Mukti or Moksha. Liberated beings, not like ghosts <laughs> that have limited understanding, not those guys. You know, the masters of Kundalini. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, if you don't have any, uh, then, you, you know, your guru might just pick, you know, you know your high self might just pick a guru that can teach you. Mm -hmm. And so we ask those masters of Kundalini you know, to step into your body and to just show you, you know, how it's being done. You know, whatever we learn so far, just maintain this. And now we, um, while we maintain this breath pattern, you know, between the earth and your heart, you know, scrubbing, you know, this pattern. Expanding your heart, basically. You know, we ask that those aspects of you that um, are still stuck on the astral plane and that got traumatized, really going bad. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, those that got traumatized. You know, um, this Kundalini, you know, going off, and, and that you really do not like Kundalini, that freak out, so we like to have yours, please brought to the other two, you're not feeling it, to stand in temple, and then being processed there, so, mm -hmm. Amen. Now I also ask, um, do you have any other aspects? This could be enemies, it could be parts of yourself that are arch-conservative, <laughs> and only into mea culpa and you have no know, kundalini so, mm -hmm. so um, anybody that's um, you know, opposed maybe even enemies that want to keep you down in your lower vibration yeah we like to have those you know either brought to the octurnular feeling and ascending temples or brought to the high courts of spiritual justice you know, and nefarious you know and hard nosed the other men just have to go uh, to the courts of justice. Um, um, so how many opposing forces do you have? And how many opposing uh, aspects of your own soul? And how many opposing uh, aspects of other people's souls? Let's ask them, what is that general green for a person? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and now and before we proceed, let's also ask your high self you know, to give permission to go on. You know, if we ask it. If it's a yes, so give us an upflow of energy. If it's a no, if it's too dangerous, give us a downflow of energy. And we ask that only the high self is allowed to interface with you right now. That way. Hmm? Okay, and now please pay attention, we're going to do the ghost protocol. So we asked for the presence of expert ascending teams that act for the highest good in divine harmony with the most great outcomes. Um, and we asked them to bring any spirits or ghosts that are still trapped on the astral plane, you know, to all kinds, you know, of um, you know, trauma from Kundalini experiences. Please bring them to the Arcturian Love Healing and Ascension Temples. Um, and then, please reunite them with lost loved ones that are also still stuck on the astral plane like lost baby spirits, you know, sweethearts, uh, cats, etc. Um, and then please show them the higher as well as the hidden aspects of their incarnations. You know, what was karma, what was volunteered for to learn as a lesson, and what was sabotage by the dark side. Please do so now. Uh -huh. Now also please clear any misunderstandings. And also please clear the deep abandonment pain going all the way back to the perceived separation from souls. Um, and then please help everybody with forgiveness. And once they forgive and ask for forgiveness, we ask our absolute source to please clear any trauma around Kundalini in the experiences you know, around this mm -hmm. to his mercy. You know, also clear any vows, contracts, promises, curses, magic, you know, or black magic around this. Also any forms of bindings or bombs or booby traps, claws, hooks, cords, chains, and anything else, you know, that's in trapping the Kundalini, but that was not mentioned, but leaves, needs to leave the space at this time. Um, and then we asked, you know, our ancestors or their ancestors that made it into the real heavens, into the higher dimensions, to please escort them. Um, um, um. And now start pulling in the earth like into your heart and send it out the top of the head. Six meters high, so you need a nice, good extended breath for that. And of course we asked our high self now to tell you when to stop in order to keep you at a safe range. Mm -hmm. And if you want, you can open your eyes now. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, while you're inhaling, mm -hmm. you know, give yourself a hello back. Calm. And when you exhale, you give yourself a round back like you can go tap and count. So you in here and then out. Of course I just do it through my mouth to make it loud for the mic. Mm -hmm. Let's go in and out. You know, do it nice and slow and conscious. You don't want to hurt your breath. So when you inhale, of course, you pull the energy up your spine, and on the exhale, you push it out the top of the head. Mm -hmm. Up and out the top of 
That's one way I call that the fountain. But now um, I said, you know, it's really important that we use this energy to open the heart, you know, to access the bliss. That's really important to have access to the morphine of life. So now on the inhale, just pull that earth love into your heart. And on the exhale, you blow it out the back of the heart. Just up. And uh, smile like an idiot to make it nice and sweet. And as much into the heart as you can, and then blow it out the back. And again, we ask the spirit guides to clear any blocks at the back of the heart. So this would be basically backstabbing, gossip behind your back. You know, stuff that's done behind your back. So like to have this cleared now as much as possible without having to look at the details. Um, and, um, and, um. Mm -hmm. and keep on pushing the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's, yeah, you probably feel a release. Mm -hmm. Some of you that are sensitive, you might feel as if you get an angel wings. You know, these so-called angel wings, um, they're just an open heart trap. Mm -hmm. And now probably the front of the heart gets jealous and alright. You know, now put in as much love from the earth into your heart and then blow it out up front. Mm -hmm. Nice, big, out there, like a big flower or lotus or rosebud, you know, but more fluffy, shiny, transparent petals, leaf petals. Mm. And just keep pushing, you know, breathe as hard as you can, mm. smile like an idiot. You know, the more you smile, and the sweeter you smile, the sweeter the chi that you're transporting. And the stronger you breathe, the more cheap you're transporting. So now you should have a pretty nice open heart chakra. If not, you might need a lesson or you know, a private session. Now we just focus on pulling the chi up your spine with one breath, all the way into the center of the brain. And then you imagine that you have a balloon on top of your head that you blow up. You, know, you probably know those, you know, Egyptian deities that had that sun disk there. Well, let's imagine that this is a sun ball. Okay. And start blowing the sun ball up as if you're like on a fairground <laughs> or at a birthday party. You know, blowing uh, balloons up with your crown chakra in a competition. Have fun. And then you start pumping this. <laughs> this ball above your head. So pull the chi all the way up your spine into the center of the head and then just, yeah, blow this ball. And you kind of probably start feeling like having a hubcap halo. A Christian style halo that you see. And, you know, like a ring around the head. So this probably comes with a lot of tinkles. Hmm? And now we go into the fountain mode. So you know pull the chi all the way into the center of your brain and then on the exhale you make that fountain go out at least six feet. We ask the angels of love and light to protect our light bodies so no predators can get our chi. Uh -huh. um, um, um. So all the way in and then out. Two yards up. And you can actually give it a spin, a nice clockwise that keeps the energy more together. Yeah, no more piddly. Uh, hubcap halo. 
This is Blazing Crown. <laughs> Blazing Crown, and you find so many ETs. You know, of the blue races, they all have crown jewelry. They have crowns like anything. You know, it's not just bling bling. It's uh, an energy device, you know, to soup up your crown chakra. Mm -hmm. Alright, so for many of you, this should be plenty. And of course, if you're hardcore, you know, keep on going. Um, now, uh, just let's you know, go into more integrative mode to calm down, mm -hmm. to make you more ready for civilization. And so you're pulling the energy from actually your root chakra outside the spine as well as inside the spine. To two kind of balls of love and light, if you can visualize them, you know, it's, I mean, it's not that important, the visualization, it's more the feeling and the breath work. But you suck this up, you know, all the way on the inner. So it hits the top of the head, mm -hmm. and then when you exhale, um, you know, you bring this ball, you know, the two balls down to the bottom of your spine, mm -hmm. and it hits the bottom of the spine, just when you completely deplete it, mm -hmm. when there is no more breath in you like it. <laughs> yeah. Then, you know, suck it up again, and it hits the top and then bring it down again. Smile like an idiot and if you're lucky it turns into love. I have a video on it where I talk about these experiences when I learned this the first time. I did not learn this from Mantak I mean all honor to him. He's a great teacher, you know, and then you know found his work afterwards. But I was from by a yogi that stepped into my body. No physical being. Yeah, astral being. Mm -hmm. it was awesome. <laughs> All right, so you know these um, so-called it's a simplified macrocosmic orbit um, will just adjust, you know, all this extra energy. Um, it's like distributing, you know, the water in an ice cube tray, you know, back and forth. So you know it will balance anything out. You know, not that all your energy is in the heavens and you barely in your physical body. You know, so that everything is in your heart, you know, and everything else is like, you know, nothing going on there. So, you know, this macrocosmic orbit, you know, we will, you know, just produce this and recycle this energy in your body again, so you can join the civilization. If you keep your crown chakra all the way open, yeah, you're going to be tripping outside, you know, which is not necessarily a good idea you know, in the supermarket or on the highway. Yeah. All right, so now let's um, thank all those beings of love and light that helped and guided us and protected us. Uh, and if anything dark or inappropriate has attached to us, you know, like entities, energies, parasites, maybe even portals, we like to have those cleared now on all levels of our well-being. Amen. And <coughs> now um, probably some aspects of your soul that have left before that I'm not putting up with this crap, you know, that can come in now because you raised your standards, so to say. You invite those to come back now. Amen. And also while this is happening, I mean, this can take even days. You know, but it can also go quite fast. But while this is happening, we asked our spirit guides and our high self to update us with the highest and best divine blueprint programs, you know, that are available for us now. Let me give permission. Amen. And then we asked our heavenly helpers of love and light to um, integrate you know, those different updated levels with each other perfectly to harmonize them and bring them up to perfect energy levels and then protect and maintain them so they cannot be, you know, let's say, stolen or contaminated or manipulated by the dark side. Amen. 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 
in then while this is being done we also ask that again all the different aspects of ourselves where we incarnated even our parallel timelines please be surrounded by this powerful aura of love and light that can only be penetrated by love and light please do so now amen And um, I will count to three and then you will be back, fully grounded in awakened day consciousness, full of energy. Well, you really should be full of energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, one, two, three. All right. Well, I hope you had a good time. And, um, you know, uh, do not drive. <laughs> <laughs> or operate heavy machinery. I hope you're grounded properly now. Mm -hmm. Consider taking a personal session with me, you know, to get you on the fast track. But uh, may your heart be blazing with love. Mm -hmm.